So for me, uh, the difference between a raw food and a cooked food is that raw food really, really, really works. What's going on, fruit family? Thanks for tuning in, thanks for checking in. You could be watching any other video on YouTube right now. And there are like thousands getting uploaded every minute, but you're watching this one, so I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Hope I deliver here. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a while. Let's get right into it. I actually made this video yesterday, or the day before, and it didn't work. And that's kind of what this video is about. It's about when you do things and they don't work. And your perception of that. Now, do you perceive that as it's just not meant to be? When things don't work out for you, do you perceive it, hey, it's just not meant to be? It's, it's, just, it's just not gonna work this time around? I should just give up? I should just take a hint? It's a sign? Or do you see it when things don't work out as life's way of testing you? The universe's way of testing you, saying, you want it? Prove it. Oh, you actually want to do this video? Prove it. Do you really want to do this video? Prove it. You actually want to do this in life? Prove it. And every time you screw up, or every time you fail, or every time there's a big mistake, or every time there's a slip up, or every time you, it just doesn't work out, you have an opportunity to then prove to yourself that you actually want it. You have the chance to prove to the world that you actually want it. You have a chance to really make a dent in the universe and prove that you want it by getting up, dusting yourself off, and going at it again. Instead of saying, oh, it's just not meant to be, I give up. Like, I filled out a form on a website before, and it took me like 20 minutes to fill out this form on a website. It was like to go to this festival, and the page automatically got refreshed, and I lost all the content. So I was like, oh my god, it's just not meant to be. So I never went to the festival. Nowadays, and, and looking back, it's like, oh, it's because I actually didn't want to go to the festival. If I really wanted to go to the festival, I would have said, you know what, I'm going to fill out the form again. Same with making this YouTube video. I made, tried to make this video a couple days ago, and uh, I started talking the first five minutes of it. I was realized I wasn't even recording because the SD card had filled up. Then yesterday I went and filmed, tried to film again, but the camera had a little smudge on it. The lens had a big smudge on it. I didn't want to upload a video with a big smudge on it, so I'm like, oh, I can't use that. So here I am again, the third time around, uploading this, because I knew I, I really want to make this video. So the, the topic of this video is perception. How we perceive things is actually the way things are. When we say, hey, this view is beautiful, is the view beautiful or are we perceiving the view to be, or are we perceiving the view to be beautiful? I could say like, oh wow, like the, the, the UK festival was such a great experience. Was the UK festival a great experience or did I just perceive it like that? Because I know some people left. I know some people went to the UK festival and say, you know what, this sucks, I'm leaving. So their experience of it was completely different because their perception of it was completely different. So it's the way we perceive things is the way they actually are. We could say, oh, like, she's amazing, or he's amazing. But are they actually amazing, or are they just... Are they just? I think it's the latter. I think people are just. And then we insert whatever we want after that. So, things just are. This view just is. The UK festival just was. Whether or not things are meant to be, that's totally up to our discretion. If and they love that quote, it's like, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. If it's meant to be, it's up to me to perceive it as if it's meant to be. So there's no such thing in life as um, it, ju it, just, it just wasn't meant to be. Because everything that is, everything that's happened, has to be here. Or we say like, uh, uh, it, it's just not supposed to turn out this way. Then, then how come it is? People say, oh, it wasn't supposed to rain. Well, how come it's raining then? Um, it, it's just so much, it's just so much more proactive, so much more progressive to see things as uh, the way they are now is perfect. Like the way they are, n the way things are now is the way it has to be. A really hard pill for a lot of people to swallow is like that that f up that happened like last week, that f up that happened like just now, or that f up that happened last year, or the fact that like your mom died, or the fact that your dad died, in the way that they died. A hard pill, pill, pill for people to swallow is the fact that they had to die like that. You know, it's like people in your family, they had to get cancer and, and, and suffer a bit. They had to get cancer and suffer a lot. You had to fall and break your thumb. You had to break up with your boyfriend. You had to catch your boyfriend cheating on you. You had to catch your girlfriend cheating on you. You had to cheat on your girlfriend. You had to cheat on your boyfriend. Whatever it is, whatever situation happens, whether it's negative or positive, it had to happen. That's why it happened. So, 
instead of getting caught up, instead of saying like, oh my god, this is just terrible, it's just not supposed to be this way, or like clearly it's a sign that, you know, it's just a sign that it's just, it's just not meant to work out. If you want something, you're gonna find a way to make it happen. If you don't want it, you're gonna find an opportunity to go do something else that you do want. I hope. I hope you find the opportunity to go and do what you do want, instead of just sitting here making an excuse for what's not working out. So when things don't work out, and you actually want it, you don't make an excuse. I, I ne didn't, never made an excuse here on YouTube and said, Oh, the reason I'm not going to upload that video is because of X, Y, and Z. It's like, no, I'm just going to try again, I'm going to try again, I'm going to try again. And the reason I didn't make the video a couple days ago is because I didn't want to. The reason I didn't make the video yesterday is because I didn't want to. That I'll admit. If, 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 you, if you try one day and it doesn't work, you're like, screw it, I'm going to sleep. That's fine. If you wake up the next day and you want to go for it again, go for it again. Some people will screw up that night and they won't go to sleep until they make it happen that night. That's how you know they really want it. That's how you know they really want it. So, you see this across the board, man. You go to any festival, whatever, you go to any like uh, high school dance or something and it's, if a guy's like after a girl or something, he's not going to sleep until he, you know, he, he, has, uh, he has a good time with that girl or vice versa. Um, they just don't want to let that go. Some guys will be like, screw it, I'll go to sleep, I'll try again tomorrow. But some guys are just like, they'll go all freaking night until they, you know, have fun with that girl or whatever it is. It's because, I'm just using an extreme example here because the desire of, uh, of, of uh, sex is so strong for a lot of people. Some people it's not that strong. Some people sex doesn't have much control, so much power over them. And uh, I think it's important to practice self-discipline when it comes to things like no fap, when it comes to things like sex, and don't let them control you. I think it's better to be the guy who says, you know what, I'm gonna go to sleep tonight if I wake up tomorrow and I still wanna go for it, then I'll go for it then. But you don't need to like get um, totally sucked into the uh, to the lust, the desire of the of the now. You say, hey, I'll just chill and go for it tomorrow. If need be, whatever. I'm using this as an example because it's an example that a lot of people have experienced, you know? They just can't sleep until they, they, they bust their nut or whatever. Like, it's just crazy. That's what I love about the no-fap lifestyle. Um, if, if a lot of guys will bust their nut right before bed, to ease the stress, you know, they feel they're laying in bed, they feel the anxiety building up, they just whack one off, boom, they fall asleep right away. But when you're a no fat man, you have to actually deal with your emotions, you have to actually deal with your stresses, and it becomes a lot easier to deal with your stresses and a lot easier to deal with your emotions, both the positive ones and the negative ones, when you're on no fap because you're never using fapping as an escape route. You're just, you know, you're observing those emotions, you're saying, hey, this is cool that I'm feeling this, and this is why I'm feeling this, because I'm focusing on this and thinking about that. That's interesting, and if I shift my focus to this, and I'll feel that, and I'll experience that. Um, it's, uh, it's a cool thing, man. It's a cool thing to experience, observing your own thoughts, rather than totally reacting to them on impulse. And therein lies the benefit of meditation. You're just sitting there, eyes closed, thinking of all these thoughts, and feeling all these different emotions, but not taking any action on them. You're just observing them. And then after 20 minutes of a half hour of meditating, you get up and you go have a conversation with your mom or your dad or your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your friend, your neighbor. And you're, as your neighbor's talking to you, as your friend's talking to you, instead of like acting and saying like, like, oh yeah, like blah, 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 you just, you know, you're just there. You're just observing um, both of them and your own thoughts, your own impulses to act, but then you refrain from acting on them. Unless they're like the best actions ever, like you just, burst out and give him a big hug or something because you absolutely want to express that love. Um, yeah man, that's, I think that's like one of the highest things we can you know, seek to, uh, one of the highest levels we can seek to be at. And that is just the only actions we take are actions out of love. Rather than acting on impulse and typing this person a hate message or acting on impulse and making a hate YouTube video or acting on impulse and saying like, no you're wrong or trying to put someone down in a conversation. Instead, we just like hold back, have that self-control, that self-discipline, and observe our thoughts in that moment, and just shut the fuck up and don't say anything unless it's going to be something of love, unless it's going to be something that's going to benefit and uplift others. If we all have the self-discipline and self-control to be like that, man, the world would be a different place. And it all starts with myself, really. Peace begins with me. So I'm not here to say you guys should do any of that, but it's a good idea for myself to start doing that. I love the quote telling by Napoleon Hill, he's like, if you're ever going to talk trash about someone, if you're ever going to say something negative about someone, if you're ever going to write something negative about someone, be sure you write it on the beach, in the sand, near the ocean's edge, so that the water can wash up and just take it away. I think it's really nice, it's really beautiful.
If you're ever gonna talk shit about someone, man, write it near the ocean's edge and let the waves do as they will with it. But anyways, guys, I just wanna say that if things aren't working in your life, it's not that they're not meant to be, it's just life's way of testing you. How badly do you want it? How badly do you want it? Me with raw food, man, do you know how many times I screwed up in the beginning? So many times. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 screw ups. 60 cooked food meals that I didn't want to have. I just wanted to focus on the fruit. And every now and then I get screwed up and I'd get lost in this cooked food mania. But you just gotta focus on the fruit, refocus on the fruit, refocus on the fruit, refocus on the fruit, learn from those experiences. Realize, hey, I slipped up because I was undercarbed. Realize you slipped up because you were focusing too much on X, Y, and Z. Realize you slipped up because you read Doug Graham's book, The Grain Damage, and as you're reading Grain Damage, all you're thinking was grains, grains, grains. Realize that you succeeded for the longest time because you're reading 80, 10, 10, it's all about fruit, fruit, fruit. Realize you succeeded for the longest time because you read Nature's First Law. Realize for the, that for the longest time you succeeded because you, ran, you read Ann Osborne's book, Path to Paradise. Realize that you succeeded for the longest time because you watched old school Dirt Rider videos and he was just talking about fruit, fruit, fruit. Realize that you succeeded for the longest time because you watched old school Freely videos. Realize that you succeeded on Raw Vegan because of Christina's videos, of Ravana's videos when she was doing Raw. Realize that you succeeded on Raw when you're watching Raw Alignment's videos when she's doing Raw. Realize you succeeded on Raw when you're watching my videos talking about focusing on the fruit. And then realize you screw up when you stray from that focus. And learn from that, man. Learn from that. Be very aware. Be hyper aware of what you're thinking about, of what you're feeling. What pictures are you holding in your mind's eye? When you think of raw vegan, do you visualize kale and carrots? Because if you do, you're probably going to continue to fail on raw vegan. But if you think of raw vegan, and you think of papayas, mangoes, peaches, plums, nectarines, apples, oranges, you know, like the, the, the bomb.com fruits, the dairy and the jackfruit, the champadocs, the mame sapotes, the avocados, and you visualize that abundance, man? Mmm, mmm, just so attracted to that. So focus on the stuff that you love. When you hold that vision of raw veganism, you're much more likely to succeed than if you visualize kale and carrots. Uh, kale and carrots, man, they don't work, they just make you fart. If you want to prove something works, if a food works, try rubbing it into your skin. Everything I listed there, from the bananas, the papayas, the mangoes, they all rub right into your skin. The avocados, the nectarines. If I drip nectarine on myself, I don't care. I just rub it right in, drip some nectarine on my legs, rub it right in, baby. Rubs right in, that's how you know it digests. That's how you know it's gonna get assimilated and absorbed and utilized by the body. Kale and carrots, are you kidding me, man? That would make me bleed. Rub some carrots on here, I'd be bleeding. Rub some kale in here, it's just gonna flake off. Yeah, you get a bit of the juice. When you chew up carrots, you chew up kale, you get a bit of the juice. That's a lot more digestible. Um, so I recommend juicing kale, juicing carrots. But even then, man, they're so low in vitamins. They're like hyper high in minerals. Um, not to the proportion that, that humans need, not to that right ratio, vitamin to mineral ratio that we need. Uh, that's why we're, we're, you know, we thrive on fruit, man. We just look around, we see fruit, fruit, fruit. You don't really see carrots. You gotta get dig underground and dig up the carrots. And kale's like you're walking on kale. You don't even see it. You're pissing on kale. I piss on kale, man. I gotta go piss in the bush. I go take a piss. And next thing you know, I'm pissing on kale. You don't piss on fruit. The well, berries are even up high, man. The berries are up high. Uh, it's all that low life stuff, man, all those greens way down low, like, not human food, not ideally. Sure, we can consume them, but again, just because something's a calorie source and just because we can eat it doesn't mean it's the most optimal thing for us. But anyways, I don't want to hate on kale, kale and carrots. I just want to say that when you think of raw veganism, man, think of the fruit, focus on the fruit. Don't think of the hard to digest stuff that you would never feed a young baby. We always feed young baby the soft apricots and the bananas and the avocados because that's the stuff that rubs into the skin. That's the stuff that we innately know that is going to be able to, you know, the baby's going to be able to digest that. Instinctively, we know that. Instinctively, we, we're so attracted to fruit. And, uh, yeah, we'd never feed a baby hard stuff, let alone granola or, like, you know, God forbid, a piece of dead animal or something. That's just whack. Just go on Google Images, type in healthy child eating and you'll see a bunch of children eating fruit. Um, quite basic, quite simple. But anyways, that's not what this video is about. I'd love to chat for hours with any one of you. If you guys want to talk at the festival or something, let's talk. Um, if I got time, of course. Or if, maybe I should get on Periscope or like do a live stream or something because it's just, I could have conversation after conversation about these things. Um, go deep and deep and deep on them. But anyways, Again, back to the topic of this particular video. Life is always going to test you. And if something screws up, it's just going to uh, give you an opportunity to prove to yourself that you actually do want it. So, 
Don't see it as a bad thing. Just see it as life's way of testing you and helping you guide you to what you actually want in life. That's what it's all about. Guiding you to what you want. Let your feelings be your guide. Let your feelings be your guide. Don't don't let outside circumstances dictate how you feel either. If something screws up, persist if you actually want it. You will persist. I'm going to have to tell you to persist. You're going to persist. If you want something, you will persist. All this self-talk, self-motivation talk and, you know, um, self-inspirational -insp pump-up talks and stuff, man. It's not necessary because when you're going after what you want, you don't need any, you know, support in that regard. You don't need any motivation, external motivation. It's all about the intrinsic motivation, man. What are you going to get out of it yourself? What are you getting out of it yourself? Don't try to impress anyone else. Don't try to do anything for anyone or anything else other than for the good feeling it gives you. That's it. Peace out, guys. Thanks for watching. Fruit Living here in Port Moody, British Columbia. Beautiful flower there. Tomato plant right there. An endless forest for days right here. The difference between raw food and cooked food is... But when I eat cooked food, it just I don't feel as alive, I don't feel as hydrated, I don't feel as good, I have to, I have to sleep more. Um, I just don't have the energy and the vibrance that I have when I eat just an abundance of raw, fresh fruits and vegetables. So if I'd have a cooked dinner, I notice when I wake up in the morning I feel quite heavy and not so good. Whereas if I have a, like a light uh, fruit dinner, I wake up in the morning I feel great, you know, I can just get up, run. Uh, it just feels amazing, and I've really noticed the difference um, between, yeah, eating uh, like raw all day or or raw till four, so with like cook, cooked um, meal in the evening. And I feel much better when I eat just all raw food. But nothing comes close to fruitarianism. It's just amazing. My energy is amazing. My health is amazing. My skin is so much clearer. It gives me happiness. That's just what I've been looking for all the time.